Ooh, my test charts. From Microbe TV. This is Twiv. No, it's not. <laughs> Let me start over. From Microbe TV, this is Q&A <laughs> with A and V. I'm Vincent Racaniello. And joining me tonight from Chevy Chase, Maryland, Amy Rosenfeld. Alan Duff. <laughs> no, I'm just talking slowly. Now everyone knows what's bothering you. What's bothering me? Your tush. Oh, that's okay. It Hello, Amy. How are you this evening? Are you well? Is, is work going I'm, well? I'm good. How are you today, Vincent? Yeah, it's not a wasn't a I, I did good things today, but there are other things that bothered me today. And we don't need to talk about it. And I wish that I could not let things bother me so much, but they do. And so now tonight we will have a nice live stream and talk about viruses. And so I wonder if people noticed on the lo the live stream um a thumbnail. We changed it to answering your questions about viruses. It was prompted by Les today, who texted me, and he said, "You should change it. Take it. Take COVID out." And so we we have 134 people so far. So those are people who don't uh, need to have a virus specific Q and A. What do you think, Amy? It's 801. How many people do you think should be here at 801? I, I don't know. Yeah, whoever it's 801. Needs, whoever needs to know. Well, the thing is, is people take time to push the button. I take time to push the button. I'm not always on time. Sometimes That's all I'm right. very late. That's all right. Yeah, sometimes I'm very late. But, uh, yeah. Hey, how, so how the, are the uh, new chairs? Well, we got some new chairs at the incubator. Yeah. How are the new chairs? Uh, they're quite nice. Would you think people would like to see them? Just take a minute yeah. to... Let's see if see. I can. Uh, yeah, they're they're very nice and they're pretty and comfortable. And Amy uh, picked them to match um, the Ebola paper. the Ebola painting. Yeah. And so now I'm going to just download one, which will take just a moment, and you can see it. They're not in the right place yet, Amy. Okay. It's okay. And I also want to show a couple of other pictures, uh, which I'll show here because they're, one of them is at the incubator. Okay, here we go. Now I have to um, unzip them. Let's see. This is a That's, process and a half, isn't it? Everything is a process. Everything yeah. Everything is a process. Okay, there is the... Uh, the one, that's the one I wanted to show. There's the second. And then the third one is this one. Sorry, folks. Uh, yeah, this is a good one. This is very nice. So. I'm uh, waiting. <laughs> Where's the downloads? Where's the download folder? Here we go. Here we go. You ready? I'm ready. All right. So this I'm is the, these are the chairs. Off my chair. These are the chairs. Oh. Ooh, very nice. Got the two chairs for sitting in this little alcove here at the incubator. This table goes between them. This, the, this bubble, the bubble pack goes. Don't worry about that. And to the Not right is, uh, is our little library. Yeah, those are pretty nice, aren't they? They look great. Yeah, super comfy. All right, and then I wanted to show you the other incubator change. Today I put up a gray seamless background. Okay, which some people say the white is too harsh. So now I sit here and uh, we're going to see this. We'll see how it looks. T tomorrow I will use it for the first time. And then one more, one last thing, which I find really interesting. Uh, this is, these are some Chinese beans from our garden. Look at the are size of them. Are they supposed to be that long? This is a knife here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> They're huge. Are they supposed to be that long? I have no idea. Uh, you know, we have these bean plants, which we looked at for weeks, and said there are no beans on them. But then it turns out inside, there are a lot of beans. So they're actually quite tasty. Saute them. Anyway, welcome to our mods. I saw Les, I saw Steph, I saw Tom, and I see Vanity tonight. Thank you for joining us and helping keep 
our little uh, civilized I'm virology sure corner. Will show up. Civilized. And today we did a Twivo live stream with Nels. Um, and uh, Les and um, Steph were there. Uh, and now we have Amy. And Amy, everything is good with you, right? Let's move on. No, no, not going to answer? No. All right. So let's let's get to our uh, first questions here. Ooh. Hello, Australia. A bunch of you from Australia. That's very cool. Where it's still winter. Um, New Zealand, of course. Oregon, California. Okay, are we just reading the geograph geography now? I'm just doing it to bug you. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to find the first question. Here we go, from Carol. Yeah. Is there harm in delaying the Hep B vaccine in newborns, which is given at birth to maybe age five or later, since babies are generally not at risk for contracting Hep B unless mom is Hep B positive? Well, if you're sure you're not, right? That's the thing. Many many moms don't know they're Hep B positive, and so it's a, it's a protection. Uh, for the child, but if you're sure you're you're happy negative, then you could delay it. Sure. What do you think, Amy? Sure. I don't know why you would want to delay it. You would forget. So, sure. Helen wants to know: Did Amy have any thoughts on Andy Slavitt as a guest on Twiv? Do I take that? No, she's asking you. I know, but I'm the one who promoted Andy's when Andy's person contacted you, right? I'm the one who said, yes, schedule Andy. Well, any thoughts? Did you enjoy it? Did you not? What are your thoughts? Um, yeah, I, I think like he had some points. Um, I think he's off on other points. Um, if you look at the YouTube so, comments, uh, they're what? pretty good. The YouTube comments are generally good. Yeah, I mean, people, so I think he does, I think he fills a niche in which we don't understand as virologists, which is the public health mm -hmm. and healthcare aspects of running pandemic preparedness programs and distributing uh, PPE and stuff. And so I think he has... A novel thing. Do I think he should be a virologist? No. No, he's not. He doesn't want to be a virologist. Right. But but he, here's... he's good at he's good. I do think though, he is good for understanding supply chain stuff, which is part of public health and part of the pandemic preparedness program. So I felt he had a warped view of uh, scientists. So he thinks that Bill Joy understands things better than scientists because he predicted that the virus would spread that it would do this that it would do that which is not really a prediction and i i really think that's the problem we have i mean he said it you know everybody's an expert he said it as as yeah. a problem and it is a problem and bill joy is one of those problems he's a software engineer and but the thing is is there were people who said that the virus can do this and the virus can do that. Now, whether or not he it occurred in Andy Slavitt, small little clicky circle is a different fashion. Yeah. I mean, some of the points that he said about the vaccine and what we didn't know are things that you and I discussed multiple times in the lab from January 2020 all the way up to when I had a hissy fit about Udell saying, oh, there's never going to be sterili what? sterilizing a long-term memory because the virus is outside of the body, which is something that you and I had been talking about way beforehand for EV68 and rhinoviruses and potentially flu. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I'm not a member of Andy Slava's click. No. I'm fact, not Angie Rasmussen, he, so the fact is, is that he would have no idea whether or not any of us as virologists thought certain things and certain things were then 
found out to be true because we're not the squeaky wheel that gets greased on Twitter. We're the hardcore virologists who sit in the lab and do experiments. So no, he, mean, wouldn't he, he, he wouldn't know. He wouldn't know. He should have not he said know. it. And he it was a blanket statement that he should have refined a little bit more. Well, he, but has, he would he has, not know. He has PR people feeding him experts. That's the problem. Well, okay? the P, right, but the PR people don't know who to feed him to. Oh, of so course, therefore, of course, they don't know. So therefore, they go to the Twitter and they go to the, see who's quoted most in the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal and various other things, and they assume that those are the people who are the art, the experts of that field, not understanding that there was a huge bandwagoning of certain individuals, and that's what they did. Okay, it's time to move on. Happy birthday, Amy, yes. Yeah, it was earlier so I, this month, thank you. Michael is a high school science teacher. Is there, are there one or two principles of virology that you would pass on to this younger group of students? What would it be? All right, I'll let Amy give you one and I'll give you one. What's a principle? Uh, principle of virology? Yeah, not immunology. Let's stick with virology. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not an immunologist. I've never taken an immunology class. Uh, a virus has two life has two phases to its life cycle. It's in, in the in adin in animate non non. Yeah, inanimate cycle when it's free, and then the infected cell is the life is the live version. That's good. I like okay. that. Yes, two two phases: an inanimate particle and a in living infected cell. Yeah. So a virus is the organism with two phases. That's great. That's a wonderful principle. Uh, and mine would be: let's see. I would say um, most. Viruses do not harm their hosts. Most of them infect hosts without doing anything. And that's every host on the planet. That's a principle. But um, would be interested in all the TWIV's answers. That's a good question. I might put that onto TWIV on Friday. Let me write it down on one of my stickies, which uh, Amy will say you're not going to bring with you, right? Yeah, kind of. One to two principles of virology. You know, and I have I wrote a book with four other authors called called Principles of Virology, and every chapter is chock full of principles. Yeah, but these have to. This guy is since he's in high school, he needs something that's general that can encompass both positive and negative strand RNA viruses, DNA viruses, retroviruses, blah, blah, blah. Okay, here's, we, we move on to Jack. Should we consider giving ACAM 2000 smallpox vaccine to prevent monkeypox? So Michael Merchlinski addressed this. He said, um, if it were smallpox, then the answer would be yes. But... Um, for, for monkeypox, the, the benefits do not outweigh the risks. So ACAM 2000 has some severe potential side effects, and, and particularly if you are have certain medical conditions, maybe immunosuppression, maybe dermatitis, you could die after receiving ACAM 2000. It has killed people. So... I think the answer is no. You wait for Genios for them to have enough supply because Genios doesn't have any of the side effects of ACAM 2000. Is that good with you, uh, Dr. Rosenfeld? Yeah. Uh, Amy's wearing her new earbuds provided courtesy of Microbe TV and all of your contributions. Yeah, they're very stylish. You can have them custom made so they have a thing on them. Like you could put one with a virus on it. Did you know? And I did not get one with a shoe. How could that possibly be? A shoe be? would be good, yeah. But if you look at like, um, who's the, the singer, very famous, uh, with the blonde hair, and she sings with Tony Bennett. 
Oh, uh, Lady, Gaga. Lady Gaga. She has custom gold ones. Oh, I don't wire. know. She has wireless, too. Okay, uh, Hat says... Mine are not wireless. Breaking Dr. R. Nott's number one Twitter rule, I argued with infectious disease MDs who called monkeypox a sexually transmitted infection. I said, considering the 2003 U.S. outbreak in Africa, it was coincidental to and not an STI. Am I wrong as usual? No, you're, you're not wrong. It is not a sexually transmitted infection. It can be if you have sex and you're close, right? You're skin to skin. Yeah, you're going to transmit it skin to skin, but sex is not needed. Just hugging, just borrowing a e-cigarette apparently is enough to transmit it, right? So mm -hmm. it's not an STI. You're right. H A T. <laughs> Can we talk about tomato flu? No, no, I don't know anything about tomato flu. But fl tomatoes don't have lungs, so we cannot talk about influenza in a tomato. Eleanor wants to know is there an incubator open house this fall? Yes, there will be one in, in September. It's around the corner, Amy. Oh my gosh. Uh, once again, another thing for me to worry about, Amy. And this time, you're not even here to uh, help worry with me. Oh, my God. What makes you think that I'm not helping you wor worry with you, even though I'm not physically located in New York? You know, I can't even remember when you were last in New York. It's like you were never in New York. You've always been at the FDA. <laughs> no, I was last in New York in June. Um, June. Yes, Eleanor, there will be an uh, incubator. We'll announce it here. As soon as we finalize the date. Uh, do you think there are as yet undiscovered microbes, particles out there that affect our health? Of course. Yeah, yeah of course. I mean, every creature on the planet, big or small, has got its own viruses and many of them. So those are all potential undiscovered for to infect us. In fact, it's amazing that we're as healthy as we are, right? Oh, you're um, healthy? I'm diseased. That's, that sounds terrible, Amy. Don't say that. It's okay. You're not diseased. I know, but I was being sarcastic. I'm relatively healthy, yes, and so are you. Yes. And you're much younger than I am, so you'll live longer. That's the theory. And when, I, when I'm gone, please take care of Microbe TV, all right? Not a problem. All right. Make make it, you know. Yeah, thrive. I know. I know what I'm supposed to do. It'll probably do better. I understand what my inheritance is. It'll probably do better <laughs> without me. Leem says, it seems self-evident that infection of the CNS is not a functional part of polio life cycle. Amen. I've been saying this for years. Amy and I have been saying this for years. So what are the other fitness advantages are gained back when a vaccine strain reverses? So the vaccine strains revert in your intestines. There is the selective force that selects for reversion because reproduction in the intestine is how the virus is transmitted. So there's a great selective force there and make more virus. So it's not the CNS. It just happens to be that that – so it's weird, right? This one change that prevents it from becoming neurovirulent is selected in the gut. So this is an example of an incidental change that increases neurovirulence what? because, yes, you're right that um, 472, 481, et cetera. What? So the fitness advantage is gained back is the ability to reproduce the high levels in the gut when reversion occurs. Yet those yeah, therefore changes. Yeah, they're virulent. Well, that's a side effect because it's not selected in the CNS. Right. But it, it makes a wrong turn for some reason. It, is, it comes out of the cell at the wrong end. Instead <laughs> of coming out at the apical end, it comes out of the basal end for some reason. I'm not clear what that is. But. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so it's the fitness advantages reproducing in the gut. In fact, some people think, and I don't actually know what Dr. Rosenfeld's take on this is. We will find out shortly. Apparently so. I'm waiting. I'm on the edge of my seat for this. <laughs> I don't know what think, she's going to say. Some people think that reversion in the gut is needed for a robust immune response because the virus reproduces better after it reverts so um it's hard to test that but it's an interesting idea but every kid who gets opv the vaccine strains all revert 
It's not sometime. It's all the time. Agreed, Dr. R? Yes. I was flabbergasted that somebody said today that it had that it was an infrequent event. I was no. like, the paralysis. Holy shit. Paralysis is infrequent, about? right? Paralysis well, yeah. is infrequent. One in 1.4 million recipients of the vaccine. That's infrequent. Yeah, I know. But reversion. I know. I know. I'm aware. I've been saying it for, yeah, I'm aware. All right. Now, are there non-immunoglobulin plasma proteins such as antitrypsin that can interfere with some viral infections? Antitrypsin? You mean there's an antibody against trypsin? No, no, it's not an antibody. It's some other thing. Antitrypsin. Alpha-1 antitrypsin is a protein belonging to the serpent superfamily. Okay, it's a protease inhibitor. Okay, so I would assume it can interfere and, with infections. And, but there are other proteins there as well. The complement proteins in yeah. plasma, can some of them can interfere with virus infections, and um, there's certainly and, more. Yeah. There, there, there are interferons yeah, that could sure. induce antiviral states, right? Of yes. course, of course. That's what they do. Okay, that's not for us. Okay, fine. My nine-year-old daughter and I are here looking forward to the stream. Well, welcome, Matt and Matt's nine-year-old daughter. That's great. I hope we'll keep it family tonight. So your nine-year-old daughter. Oh, we don't always? Now, sometimes you, you curse a little bit, Dr. R. Yeah, uh, I think you do, no? Yeah, sometimes you exacerbate me. Exacerbate. <laughs> I think the word is, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Annoy, but it's not annoy. It's a no, it's word. not annoy. Exacerbate is when you make something that's bad worse. Yeah, sometimes yeah. you make worse answer worse. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes you make bad answer worse. Yes, that, that, that's true. I recently saw an article on apobec RNA editing enzyme signals in recent monkey po Oh, God. you got to be kidding me, right? What's wrong? It's a little the bit of apobec in the genome. In monkeypox? Yeah, I mean, that, that would be a bit much, no? So where did, so what, yeah, this is correct. No, I don't think that that's correct. That's just ridiculous. I haven't seen it, but I'd have to look. Have we seen similar for SARS-CoV-2 or the mRNA? No. So Ap Ap Apobec, of course, is an RNA editing enzyme. Yeah, so where, so how would, the, so you want me to believe that the RNA gets incorporated into the cytoplasmic gene, the genome of monkeypox. Right. Yeah, sure, if we're in science fiction class. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure about this, but I, I'd have to look at it. We're, it just doesn't, signals. It doesn't. Uh, so I don't know what that means, signals, just some homology, I suppose. So we don't even know. I don't even, yeah, I don't know. It's a, I don't even think that there's homology. That's mm. crazy. Uh, Rach, Rach from the Isle of Man. Yeah, I'm only going to Manchester. No, but don't send me bagels. We'll come back another time and uh, get some bagels. <laughs> bagels are them. important. Yeah, I, I, I like bagels very much. You have to have good ones. Yes, I know. I've taught you how to be a bagel snob. <laughs> My lifetime achievement. <laughs> I like this one. Vincent in the Beanstalk. Yeah. That's great. It's very good. Uh, Amy, what advice would you give to a budding virologist? Find a new career. <laughs> oh my gosh. Spartacus or Spartavus is probably the budding virologist. You don't want to <laughs> discourage uh, she or he. Uh, no, I was teasing. What advice would I give? Read a lot. Learn a lot of history. Yeah. Comes in handy. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, I, this is interesting. Hmm. Uh, I, What's interesting? I think you have to read, don't you think? 
Yeah, that's why I said read a lot yeah. the, and learn a lot of the history. What is interesting? You're typing away, so. Well, C.D. Ward said those are Chinese long beans. So I just looked up some, and there's a thing called Chinese long beans. Yeah. But the ones you in the pictures. You don't know what, what plant you pot, you you planted? No, I know what we I know what we planted. Someone asked Phil here says where did you get the seeds? So those seeds are normally a buck each, but some we got them as a gift in a package of other seeds that we ordered. And so we planted them. And and they have seeds in them, so we take those out and dry them and plant them next season. <laughs> it's so funny. Uh Tess wants to know any hypotheses on why polio outbreaks occurred in the summer. Dr. Rosenfeld? Uh, it's the right temperature and humidity here for virus, for efficient virus transmission, and you get it from water. So most people got it when they were swimming and stuff, I think. I think it was a lot of sanitation when you were outside and doing stuff. Mm hmm Uh, here we go. Preclinical vaccine studies indicate the lipid nanoparticle component is highly inflammatory. Can lipid nanoparticles used in mRNA negatively affect the body? Is there residual effects? Where do the lipids go? They get destroyed. Yeah, they're broken when they down. fuse with the cell, they get destroyed. Um, there don't appear to be any residual effects, and there don't appear to negatively affect so they've been in many many millions of people so far within the last two years we don't see anything right? well they also tested they also tested uh, empty lipid nanoparticles right the guy in canada that's what he does uh, what's his name i forgot I think he's like out west in Canada, like in British Columbia or Vancouver. Excuse me. Why was the EUA granted for the new Omicron vaccine without human trials? Well, I don't they know. did. They did um, what uh, Merchlinsky would call uh, immunobridging. They did a small trial of volunteers where they gave them the vaccine, and then they measured their antibody response, right? That's all they did. They did not do an efficacy trial. You're correct. There's no clinical okay. data, yes. Uh, there isn't any. Um, why was the EUA granted? Because the, a prophylactic, I guess. The, the, um, <laughs> the advisory committee on which Paul Offit was a member voted 19 to 2 in favor, and so the FDA decided to take their advice. But if you listen to Paul Offit on TWIV, he talked about his concerns. Yeah. Could you please define infection? Amy and I fight about this all the time. I always should say we don't fight. We discuss. What is infection? So, Amy, what is an infection in your view? The virus binds a receptor, gets in, and then what happens? has to be translated and make new particles. So does an infection require the production of new particles? Yes. So I would agree. I would agree. But many people do not. They view an abortive infection as an infection, right? Where a virus gets in, maybe some proteins are made, but no assembled particles are made. Some people still maybe think the virus infection. just gets in and it gets digested and presented on the surface of the cell. Then it's not infection. But the thing is, is that that is immune stimulatory. Yeah. So the nuances are blurred. And then they're, we use the words colloquially incorrectly, and then it, the message gets amplified. Because the people who they contact who actually use the words don't actually know what they mean because they're not so detail oriented. They just throw them out like candy. But an asymptomatic infection, there is reproduction occurring. New virus particles are made. You just don't Right, you just don't symptoms. get, right. But yes, you, you do. So that's an infection, clearly. And you do need B and T cells to, to resolve it. 
But what is not an infection, in our view, and this is our view, but not all virologists will agree with us, is if a virus, say, got into a macrophage. Non-specific phagocytosis. And stopped. Well, you know, the paper we did a while ago about how macrophages contribute a huge inflammatory burden, um, they actually showed that the virus is getting in via ACE2. Okay, so they they did those experiments. So. But that might not be the case for a lot of the for a lot of viruses. That's only one virus. There are a lot of viruses and crap that is non-specifically phagocytosed in your gut and non-specifically phagocytosed in your respiratory tract. So I wouldn't use some anecdote for SARS-CoV-2 as a principle. Okay. Uh, what do you think of the different approaches from WHO for, versus USA on new bivalent vaccines, BA1 versus 4.5? Any thoughts, Amy? So what is what? The WHO is saying you should only include BA1? Well, since USA is 4.5, I'm assuming WHO is saying BA1, yeah. But either way, if, if you, someone, no, no matter whether it's USA or, or WHO, the truth of the matter is, is most likely that variant isn't going to be circulating by the time we, isn't going to be the predominant variant that's circulating by the time we dis, we distribute all these bivalent vaccines. So I don't think it makes a hell of a bean to have a difference. I mean, long, long beans, really long beans? Yeah, really long beans where we can dry the seeds and use them to seed the ground for next year. Yeah. <laughs> Year one. BA1 has been supplanted in many places by 4 or 5 already. So I don't think there's any, even the FDA of the U.S. has said to the companies who gave them BA1 data, said, we want you to formulate a BA4 or 5 vaccine. So I think you need to at least have 4 or 5 if you want to have a booster. I mean, frankly, I don't think it's needed, but that's another story. Maybe a virus made the beans grow faster. Well, yes, here in the rack and yellow farm, <laughs> we appreciate Virus is doing things. Oh, you right? have a farm? Do you have farm animals too? Oh, it's not really a farm. It's just a couple of gardens. I don't have a farm. Yeah. I'm not a I'm not a farmer, no. Uh, Vanity Nutrition says I was reading about post vaccine reversion in dogs immunized for canine parvovirus. Is this common in viruses with oral fecal roots? Well, it's just common in the vaccine, how they make the vaccine. Yeah, so it does. I don't think the root has any impact. It's just, yeah. Most attenuated and most infectious attenuated vaccines are things that can revert. Well, the measles vaccine doesn't revert. It's one. How long after SARS-CoV-2 infection should you wait to get vaccinated for polio or smallpox? Once you feel better. John, Daniel Griffin, that's what he says, right, Amy? Yes. What color is your cashmere sweater tonight? Purple. POV MCDOV says there were human trials. I did some work on the trial. Yeah, yeah there were some, but not... not Prevention of uh, severe disease or death, for example. Uh, since neither OPV or IPV prevents infection, would unvaccinated people inevitably get polio eventually? Yeah. That's correct. Shouldn't there be a lot more AFM out there, or is it not tracked well? Um, so AFM surveillance and reporting is a passive network. So you have to have a case that you think is AFM and fulfills very stringent criteria before you contact the health department and the CDC. Um, you're not required to report it. It's up to the, it's up to the hospital and the state health department. Um, but since OP, since polio vaccination in general in this country is very high, you don't expect to see a lot of AFM. Yeah. Yeah. If the vaccine rates are high, you don't, you don't see it. Yep. 
Uh, he seemed not to have watched early TWIVs. I, I think you may be talking about Andy. I was surprised that he didn't even watch a TWIV to see what it would be about, right? No interest whatsoever. I mean, if I go on someone's podcast, I will usually go watch it a bit to see what it's all about, right? I guess you watched a lot of Lex Friedman before you went on. Yeah, I did watch some. I'm the same age as V, had measles and mumps, no rubella. Okay, so you can get a rubella vaccine if you're worried. I'm not sure that truth or dare is worried, but just sharing information. Uh, I take it back. Don't get a vaccine. Pete says, I found Vincent's in 1981 paper with Baltimore on decoding the polio virus. I've been reading it too. Quite difficult. Of course, not all 7,410 nucleotides. It's a scanned PDF, seems to be free. So there are two 1981 papers with Rack and Yellow in Baltimore. One is doing the genome sequence, and the other is showing that the DNA is infectious. I think you. You can get them both for free, yeah. I enjoyed Andy Slavitt. He didn't pretend to be a scientist. He truly feels strongly about the need to make health care available. So I think that part is very important. That's his stick, right? He's a health care person and wants to get it to everyone, and that's good. Because everyone should have health care. That's, in my view, the function of a government or one of the functions of a government. Tom says, your remarks at one hour resonated with me. I don't know which ones. Is it like if 100 people make a guess, one one may be right or something like that? I don't know if that was it. Someone else told me they like that. Uh, Rach, interesting. Uh, Slava was good, but he seemed to think he should have known what was going to happen with SARS-CoV-2. I don't think he listened to Twiv much. No. Not interested. I don't at all. think, but the thing is, is I don't think you needed to listen to Twip. I think that nobody can predict how a course of viral infection is going to work out in an individual or in a general population. Because if you could, then nobody should be dying of any virus. Mm. Well, um, I don't think it's an indictment if someone's wrong, you know, and, and remember he said to us, you give me the episode where you said this and I'll listen to it. And Amy was trying to find one, right? Well, said no, actually. So actually there are episodes. So the episode with you doubt said that you would never make sterilizing immunity. There Did were several. Ep- yeah, because it's the episode that in his episode it was his yeah. episode, his first episode, he says, how he goes, oh, he's like, oh, I've been thinking about this for years and about how, oh my God, there's no viremic phase. And it was at that time that you and I had been discussing mm. about the fact that there's no viremic phase for 68, but there is a tr- very transient viremic phase for polio. <laughs> and that EV68 is majorly outside the body. So right then and there, if all you had to do was say, just listen to the episode with Udell, and he will tell you that there would have never been mm-hmm. lifelong immunity. Then, so that's what I said. And then he said something else about um, that we would not have known that, vir- that the inf- that vaccine did not protect against infection. Well, if you listen to the live stream, then you would know that I've always said that no vaccine has protected against infection until a pediatrician in L.A. who is a super antigen guy wrote in and said, no, that's not correct. The HPV protects against infection. So then I walked it back. I said I was wrong. I walked it back. And then I went to an interview and one of the women in my interview committee, she said, I repeated that. And she said, no, that's absolutely wrong. People were infected during the trials. So then I said, well, she must know because she is one of the people who was a reviewer. So she actually, and she works on vaccines. So she probably knows. So then I said that the pediatrician didn't know what he was talking about. And then I thought about it some more. And I said, well, you know, the truth of the matter is, is 
we don't really use the vaccine for polio properly. We don't talk about it properly because all we say is that infection correlates with the development of paralysis in a colloquial environment. And I've corrected my family saying, no, that's not actually true. You do get infected with polio. You just don't develop paralysis. And that's the only time that you guys know when you're infected with polio because you have this severe symptom of paralysis, right? Nobody cares if you have a blip of a fever for a day and a half. So if Slavit had done his homework and had, or you guys had done your homework and had remembered these little conversations, then you would have turned around and you would have said to him, well, you know, actually we did discuss about the inability to generate lifelong term life or long-term memory when we had John Udell on in April, 2020. And he said, it's because there's no viremic phase. And in fact, Amy repeated that or reminded me that we had been having these fights in the lab about. Well, Slava did say, send me the episode. I'll listen to it. Fine, because send him the I, episode of, of Yadel, and you can tell him yeah. that we right. we have the episode on the live stream, which I was trying to look for when I asked you why I couldn't find all the live streams on the YouTube, where we clear, where I clearly say no vaccine protects against infection. And then, as I said, the pediatrician from L.A. who do super antigen wrote in and corrected me. Um, which turned out not to be correct. But by the way, what happens to the old live streams? Does anyone know? Because Amy couldn't find really the, the earliest ones. I thought they were all archived on YouTube. I think maybe I have they them. only go back. Maybe they only maybe they only go back like a hundred episodes or like a year I and a half. Know. But but you know, my well, that's your job to know. That's what we pay you the big bucks to know. Actually, I'm not paid big bucks. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay though. The these episodes are recorded locally on my computer also. Um, and so there's a folder with them. I can look in that as well. All right. Now, here's one more thing about uh, Slavit. So Lisa says on Andy's show, Larry's, Larry Brilliant was the one talking about COVID path as the roll of the dice. Don't know why he referred to the other guy, Bill Joy. And so Slavit mentioned on the on the TWIV, you know, my friends said it would become more virulent, it would vary, it would do this and that. Well, you know what? Nobody knew that. And they could just be guessing. I don't think it's more virulent. Yeah, well, it isn't. That's the thing. It's it's not. But, I, you know, that's a whole other argument that we've had. But we don't predict. And anybody could have read a book and, you know, you could pick up the evolution of virulence. And the guy talks about all the different possibilities. And Bill Joy would say, oh, look, it could happen. And nobody's listening to me. Well, nobody's listening to you because we don't know and if it's going to happen. Well, anything can happen. You know what? I could walk out of my apartment and some guy could come up and give me a billion dollars. I could walk out of my apartment and get be run over by a bus. I could walk out of my apartment and the sky could start raining on me and I not have an umbrella and get wet. Anything could happen. I adore, Andrew said, I adore that Amy has a Keith Haring print behind her. Unfortunately, he yes. was taken too early by eight. Yes. It's a very yes, nice print. True. It is. I'm a big Keith Haring fan. I used to like to go to his chapel at St. John the Divine, but he's never finished it. Is there a plausible theory for zoonotic origin of polio? I see camel to gerbil for smallpox failing to find even guesses at polio. Right, you're absolutely right. Nobody has investigated. We have no idea. Now, hepatitis A virus, which is in the same family, picornavirus, has a rodent origin. So I'm willing to bet this sticky notepad that polio has a rodent origin. Are you willing to bet that rhino has a rodent origin? Based on that philosophy? I haven't thought much about rhino. Polio is my game. Oh. <laughs> Polio has been my game, yeah. Are you? Uh, are we willing to bet that 68 has a rodent origin? I bet, I bet most of the picornas are rodent. Oh, there are some bat picornas, aren't there? Yeah, there's tons of yeah, bat picornas. Bat, yeah, but they don't seem to cause any disease, even in the bat. Hmm. Les says, viruses are like running the wrong program on your PC. 
<laughs> I don't know what that means. I have a PC and I can't stand it. Yeah, Amy had to get a PC at the FDA running Windows. She doesn't like it. I don't know how to use it. The keyboard sucks. I push the wrong button all the time. <sighs> Disaster. I came Not across good. first time ever a parasitoid wasp in a hornworm. Yeah, parasitoid wasps are pretty cool. They inject their eggs into the hornworm and they then eat they eat their the hornworm. Yeah, it's disgusting. It's nature, man. It's nature. Yeah, there are some things in nature is disgusting. What's the brand of these awesome earbuds? Westone. We did it last. Yeah, we looked at it last week. Westone. Did you Audio. get the same pair? Did you get a new pair too? Yeah, I got an X30. You you have an X10 or 20. Why? I don't know. I wanted to try it. I figured you were trying the 10, and then. I'm going to bring these to the... Well, what, uh, is it mean? what does the X30 and X10 and X20 mean? Where is the difference? The number of drivers. This has three drivers and yours has... What is yours, a 20 or a 10? You know? <sighs> yeah. You don't I have do. to take it off. No, no, no. Don't take it off. Please. I have to go get the box. No, it's I don't want you to leave. No, no. Don't leave. Forget it. Uh, it Fine. It's just the number of drivers. Well, do you think drivers. I just keep the box all over the place? No. The box so goes it's just, in the closet. It's just... It's very much like yours, see? The same idea. You're not wearing is, yours today? The wire is very thin. I'm wearing my old pair, see, with the thick wire. Ah. So we're, we're moving up in the world. I'm a little okay, unhappy well, maybe... with the ones at the, the incubator, so I got these. Well, I'm unhappy with my wireless ones. I need to buy a pair of wireless ones that work. Not good for the death. No, I'm, this is funny. Did you see reports about newest Omicron being more transmissible or immune evasive? I don't think it's more transmissible. It is moving through the population because of its immune evasive properties. It may be more immune evasive than previous. I'm, I wouldn't be surprised, but, um, you know, the transmissibility as, as a property of the virus can't be deduced from these from these quick studies. Mike says, at the outset of the pandemic, high-dose N-acetylcysteine was proposed as a treatment. Has this held up? No. No. School is back. Any progress on getting experts to discuss aerosol? I'm working on it. As Amy will tell you, I'm not very good at I scheduling. didn't say anything. Did I say anything? Don't be bringing me into this. Oh, this is the comment. I never bet against the virus mutating. That's right. They they are. This is their new NOPV2. They're betting it's not going to revert. And I say, Amy, never bet against a virus. Who, what oh, was it, it from? Revert. It will oh, revert. Here's the, the line from Star Wars, which Amy won't get. Never tell me the odds. <laughs> never bet against a virus mutating. Why is why would that come up in Star Wars? I don't understand. Because the robot told uh, Han Solo the odds of you're getting out of this. The is, robot, the 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 short little silver thing. Or no, the tall, tall gold one. The tall the gold, gold one. Oh, that's a robot. That's not C3. somebody just wearing gold paint. Well, it's an actor robot. wearing gold gold stuff, but it's a robot in the storyline. But it's C three PO, and he says your odds of getting out of this are. You know, 526 to, to, to 1. And Han Solo turns to him and says, never tell me the odds. Well, I'm telling you, Amy, never bet against the virus mutating. It's a little I bit never, longer. I don't yeah. bet against the virus mutating. I am sure that it will figure, it will do things. I know it does things that is unexpected. So I know stuff. Oh. Uh, tomato flu is a disease in spotted in India. I think it's the red blotches. Some people, it's just hand, foot, mouth. Oh, tomato flu. It's in people or tomatoes? It's in people. Okay, got it. Uh, this is oh, Doctor Rowe is Doctor Rosenfeld. Her number one Twitter rule is to stay off Twitter. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Your number one uh, user user rule for Twitter: stay off. Yes. Arnott, are you Doctor Arnott? Apparently so. I love it. That's great. 
Um, <clears throat> Sunshine says, swimming water. Should I worry about swimming in lakes and rivers? For what? Why should you worry? Well, if you don't swim, yeah, I would worry. If you're not sure what's on the bottom, I would worry. But Wear it, shoes. Me, wear shoes, but don't worry about viruses. So maybe you're worried about the brain-eating amoeba, right? Just oh, don't, from Nebraska? Yeah, just don't jump in so that the water shoots up your nose because that's how the amoeba get into your brain. Uh, that's... Uh... Don't do We're it. We're not on parasites. We're not on TWIP. It's a TWIP thing. You and Daniel and Dixon to talk Gabriel, about. Gabriel, thank you so much for your contribution to the incubator. Really appreciate it. Gabriel's from Mexico. MX is, is uh, Mexico dollars. That's lovely. Vincent, are you putting off the shingles vaccine because of the side effect downtime? No. Um, Doxon gal, I have a list of medical things I need to take care of which grows by the month. And I am just uh, too busy these months to do it. Too busy to take care of myself. Um, I've heard that I, for like many years. But I'm going to take care of all of it, including the shingles vaccine. Actually, who got a shingles vaccine? Someone went Maybe into Doris. CVS. Doris went into CVS and got a shingles vaccine. Yes, because Doris is responsible. She's a responsible adult. She True. knows what to. She knows how to use her time wisely and what to take care of and prioritize. It's true. It's true. I'm not. I'm not a responsible. We're not adult. responsible right. adults. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> so no, I'm ay, not putting ay. it off. Oh, all right. Look, I'm going away in a week, in a few days. I don't want to get it before I go away. Okay, that's not a good idea. I get it when I come back. <laughs> this is hysterical conversation. Let's move on. Let's, Let's move, move on. on. What do I miss most about Amy not being in New York? <clears throat> I can't take too long to answer this, can I? <laughs> no. I just it, it's it's more fun when I'm around. <laughs> She helps me solve problems you know, better in person, you know. Yes, I do. But, okay, let's move on. Um, Click the button. Uh, someone's yelling at me for not getting a shingles vaccine, you know. Uh, I'll get it. I'll get it. Uh, you want me to do it before TWIV on Friday? I don't think so. No. Leo says, I woke up this morning with a slight sore throat. I took one of the rapid antigen tests, came out positive. No temperature or other sign of illness. How long do you think it will take to clear them? To clear the test? No, <laughs> to clear the symptoms. A few days, probably. It's hard to say. Take a test. Take a second one in, in a day or two, okay, and see what it comes out. And if it's positive twice, then, yes, you're SARS-CoV-2 positive. Um, it, but you're vaccinated, so you're going to have a mild illness, most, most likely. Sounds like Iris' wife, who had who had COVID, took her eight days, and she was fine. Uh, Michael says scientists aren't the same thing as science. I don't think Andy understands the nature of science. Science takes a bit of time to self-correct, especially for a novel virus. Novel, knowledge is tentative at first. Uh, sometimes it takes a long time to self-correct. Oh, yeah. Long time. Not so good. Hearing reading about immune imprinting and booster shots. Should we stick with the original booster? Does bivalent with 4 or 5 present a reduced immune response? No, it's not a, it's not a reduced... Immune response. Um, it's a it, it's a theory that there could be imprinting. That's what Paul Offit mentioned on his twip, which would mean that if you get this, you're mainly going to make a response against the original. But there's original in the booster anyway. It's bivalent, right? Yes. And you know what? If you make 
a response not clear against the original. Where he got this yeah. I don't think it's a problem to have imprinting in this case, right? I really don't think I'm so. not even clear where he got the idea that there would be imprinting, considering all of the work done by Theodora and Paul and Michael News and Sweet and others along the same lines. Mm -hmm. So you can clearly see that when you you can clearly see that there are antibodies uh, that are highly divergent. So yeah. I don't really understand. Yeah. And then when you do get a boost that's different or you get infected with a different one, you make antibodies against that one. So I don't understand where, I don't really understand where he got this concern. Sounds like it's not really correct biologically. Maybe in theory, but not biologically. Uh, I remember in a paper that hypothesized that for RNA viruses, a virus could be designed that replaced RDRP with RT. This virus could be used to compete for RDRP with normal viruses. I think that would be a stretch, don't you, Amy? Designed to so how would that how would it be compete with R? It would you be used to compete for RDRP? Yeah, I don't think that that's correct. So in other words, you would use it as a vaccine and then it would compete. Yeah, I understand. But... I don't think that that's correct. I mean, the, the thing is that to, to accommodate... Why would I do that? I could have just taken out the R... I could have just taken out the active site, the RDRP, and just used the same virus. It would be exactly the same thing. It's called a defective interfering particle. Yeah, I... I... I don't think that's a really good approach, but I didn't see the paper, but it's a hypothesis, right? They're not actually doing anything. Does rabies vaccine ever revert? So rabies is an attenuated vaccine as well. Um, now, our colleague at Columbia is not working on rabies, He's working on yellow fever, right? Yes. I think... Uh, yellow fever may occasionally revert, correct? Yes, it did. That's why the patient that Ian and Niche are interested in. Yeah. I'm not aware of, in humans anyway, rabies vaccine reverting. So Bully thinks the rabies vaccine is um, inactivated. I'm not sure. Let's look it up. Yes, there is an attenuated vaccine that is given to uh, wild animals. <laughs> well, I'm sure then we don't culture virus back out. Let's look at it a different way. Rabies vaccine from the CDC. Do you think they would quickly tell me what, what it is? No. Package inserts for the from the FDA? <laughs> I was under the impression that it was an, uh, attenuated, but you may be right. Uh, no, no, no. This is a, very interested now. Here we go. Four doses of rabies vaccine. Hmm. Not finding it. Look okay, it up, well, someone. we're done here. Look it up, folks. Uh, yeah, so Bully said, pretty sure it's inactivated. All right. Alexander says, three requirements for virus eradication. That's uh, lifelong immunity, infect only humans, and no asymptomatic infections. Right, Amy? Yeah. Could you still vaccinate even if there was asymptomatic spread? Is not is it a practical restriction that 100% of people just wouldn't get vaccinated? Well, you, you, you can vaccinate, but you may not be able to eradicate, right? Right. A and you don't need 100% of people to be vaccinated, close to, right? But you don't need 100. Mm -hmm. Lisa, thank you for your contribution to the incubator. So Les says that it's an inactivated vaccine. Thank you very much. 
Yeah, inactivated vaccines don't refer. Doreen has to be a way to learn about river dams. We'll, ha we'll listen later. What, what is a river? Oh, that's very interesting. I wonder why. Uh, with respect to the London polio outbreak, how long have these sewage surveillance projects been going? Is this always it's been COVID. happening or undetected, or are we only seeing it now post-COVID because we look? So polio has always been circulating. We're only seeing it because we established a wastewater sur a surveillance system for SARS-CoV-2 infections. So Amy and I for years have been asking to do wastewater surveillance for polio and no one wanted to do it, right? That's true. But now they're doing it. Uh, could you explain if original antigenic sin is the same thing as immune imprinting? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So imprinting is is being used more frequently because it doesn't have the secular connotation. Is secular the right word? No, religious. Secular is non-religious. Tell me again mm -hmm. why you associate with me. Oh, this is an association. Who are you again? Ay, ay, ay. So the only thing, Lisa, is that if you want, I mean, he, Paul presented it in terms of papillomaviruses, right? If you want to immunize against, say, a new papillomavirus that appears and the vaccine will only induce antibodies against the original one to which you were immunized, against which you were immunized, that's a problem, right? So for SARS-CoV-2, in my opinion, having a response to the ancestral virus is fine because those antibodies and T-cells are quite protective against uh, disease. I wouldn't have used HPV as the vaccine. I would not have used HPV as the disease. Well, it was a good, it's really, it's just an example because really there, there's, there are data. There are data. No, dengue is antibody-dependent enhancement. But, which is original sin. But okay, fine. Go ahead. Move on. It's it's similar. I agree with you. It's similar. Okay. I'm not disagreeing, but there are four serotypes of dengue. And then if you, if you have, if you get infected with the, a different serotype, you get hemorrhagic fever yeah, because that's memory though. That's memory. It's all memory, sweetheart. Okay. Oh, don't say that just so that I won't get mad at you for disagreeing with me. Ay, ay, ay. All right, it's all memory. Tonight's saying is it's all memory, sweetheart. <laughs> oh, here we go. Peter is telling us about this doc is an initial report on the observation of an abundance of specific mutations. Oh, that can be ascribed to the action. Got it. So Apelbeck makes mutations in nucleic acids that, that have a signature that you can tell, right? because it's a cytidine deaminase. It takes cytidine and takes the amine off and it makes a U out of it. Is that right, Amy? Yes, but that would, how, why would that affect? So that doesn't make any sense considering the fact that mon monkey pox, it would only be on the messenger RNA encoded by the monkey pox, by the monkey pox genome. The monkey pox genome is not being altered. It's so, just, no. it's, it's, it's causing an RNA change, which is the mRNA of some protein from monkeypox. No, the, the DNA is, is the substrate. The DNA is the substrate. That's not what you just said. Because where, when did you ever see a U put into DNA? But then maybe cytidine deaminase makes it a G. No, that would, that wouldn't work. I'm pretty sure it's a. Uh, it would have to, to be you. a T then, and I've never heard of a C, a C going to, I've never heard of, I don't think that that's correct. I believe that it, I, I, I don't think that that's correct. On RNA, it changes C to U. Right. So it has to change the mRNA of the gene of, a pro, of 
it's not changing the monkeypox DNA genome. It's changing the mRNA. So Apobex can deaminate cytosines in DNA and RNA. So it can do both. And, well, and then if, if it's DNA, it goes C to T. You're absolutely right. Yeah. C to T, and then it changes the base. So what they're seeing in monkeypox is the signature of Apobex, which is not surprising, right? No. I like this. Flying spiders, I'm out. <laughs> yes, thank you, Matt, for clarifying. I thought you they saw signatures of the actual enzyme in the genome, but they're actually seeing signatures of the mutational effect. Good. Got it. Vincent, you need pods to dry on the bean plant for seed saving. Fully dry and it's still a live stem. Oh, okay. So you can't take the wet seed out and dry it. It's not going to work? Well, I will deliver that message to the um, farmer. Got it. <laughs> Am I hearing a reason? for why someone might think PCR wouldn't be diagnostic. Because Kerry Mullis said so 40 years ago. Okay. Did you know that, Amy? What? Kerry Mullis said PCR is not diagnostic. Yes. And that's why people are digging it up now to say we shouldn't be using PCR to diagnose. Look, Kerry was very, very smart, but he was also sometimes wrong. Just happens. Does that apply to you as well? Of course. To all of us. Well, not all of us are smart, right? We're all smart, just differently. Uh, I'm an Uber driver. Should I be concerned about picking up a passenger with monkeypox? Could the pus from lesions contaminate my seats and seat belts? I'm worried because my kids sit there too. Well, um, usually... The seatbelt is around a clothed portion, right? So I think the the risk is pretty low. Um, I just did, I, I read a study in the Emerging Infectious Diseases Journal where they had a person with, with uh, confirmed monkeypox. He stayed in his apartment for 10 days. And then the CDC team went in and swabbed everything. And very little infectious virus on the surfaces. So yeah, it's not as it's not as it's not uh, as hardy a virus as smallpox in that respect. Yeah, so I think I you're think okay. even Conda says that. I think you're okay, uh, Luminous. I would just, and I it's always a good practice to wash your hands before you touch your face if you're touching the back seat or the seat belts and so forth. That's all. Um. So for an infection, cells need to be susceptible and permissive. Yes. That's great, Michael. It's perfect. Uh, by the way, the, a plaque assay princess is like a farmer in a way, maybe. Plaque assay princess does not do dirt. No dirt. It's soil. It's soil. Call it whatever you want. I'm calling it dirt. So so uh, our dear viewers, do you call it soil or dirt? <laughs> I said, Doesn't matter the difference to me. It's always going to be dirt. I said it on TWIM the other day, and Michelle Swanson said, Vincent, it's soil. She can call it whatever she wants. I call it dirt. We don't do dirt. Black assay princess does not do dirt. So Tom said, Tom Steinberg says, Amy is never, ever, ever nearly wrong as Carrie Mullis was. He His remarks on PCR was as an AIDS denialist. Thank you, Tom. Uh, yeah, I forgot that that's when he said it. Yeah, that's correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, he was a crazy. He had too much LSD. Steph says dirt. <laughs> At least says soil equals dirt. It's pretty funny. See? I call it Earth. Oh, that's cool. You can Earth. call it whatever you want. As long as you don't call it late for dinner. 
Sure. You know, do you know that saying? You probably don't. I do. I do know uh, that saying. 67 year old triple vaxxed expect to take second BA5 boost when it's out. Any caveats? No, no. caveats. It's, you're, you're fine. It's not a problem. What was notable about the 81 paper was the only names were Racaniello and Baltimore. Yep. And there were two papers I published with David, just he and me. Yeah. I have two, I have several papers with you, just you and me. We do? Yeah, we do. Two? Mm hmm. Vaccines seem to have triggered my decades-old EBV-generated CFS. I don't know how you would know that, right? I mean, it's certainly possible that the, the inflammation in, triggered some EBV reactivation, but um, I assume you've always you've had CFS symptoms on and off, so I'm not sure you can describe it to that. Um, can you remind me which TWIV was about retroviruses? Well, there have been many, right? Many different aspects. We've covered many papers over the years, so there's there isn't just one. I'm, I'm sorry to say. Dr. Burks have some strong views on people having access to health care. It's not so much political views that prevented conservatives from getting vaccinated, but lack of access. Same with treatments. I don't know what what view other than everyone should have access to health care is right, right? Isn't Amy, don't you think everyone should have access to health care? Absolutely. So what alternative view is there except not have access or have limited access? But you're right. It is um and and of course it's it's economic as well. It's totally economic. Uh, Alan also said that he had, in TWIV 693, discussing Chadox. Alan said it protects against severe disease but does not have sterilizing immunity. 693 was some time ago either, even. Yeah, I'm sure you can find many episodes where we talked about that, as Amy said. All right, we have another question on tomato flu. <laughs> I have to look this up. Sometimes, Amy, when you're, what is tomato flu? New outbreak spreads in India. Lancet Respiratory Medicine. So this should be a reputable journal, right, Amy? Yeah. Tomato flu has emerged in India, children younger than five. The viral infection, so they're calling it a viral infection. I don't know why. It could be a variant of hand, foot, and mouth disease, which Amy knows well, right? Coxsackie virus. Of course I know well. I'm not saying it derogatorily. I know, uh, but so, I know it well. I so know these it kids, intimately. We're on a first-name basis. Coxsackie B, one, two, three, four, five, and six. <laughs> We're on a first-name basis. So yes. another picornavirus, an enterovirus, can cause fever, rash, as and well as Coxsackie A is 1, 6, 9, 10, 21, 16, 24, and 24 V. We're on a very intimate basis. So, we so spend a lot of time together. The, why can't they figure this out? It's an easy PCR to do, right? I don't they know. I'm not stumped. in India. It's so, not so Lori, they should just be doing PCR and, and sort it out. Past live streams ought to be on the episode list, but there are many episodes in the channel. You might consider creating a playlist. We do have a playlist. Did you look at the playlist, Amy? Where is this playlist? Oh, yeah, I looked under the YouTube channel. You can look at playlist all for Q&A, and it only goes to like 2021. Let's see. To the, begin to the very beginning of 2021. Oh, you did look at that, right? I did look at that. I'm pretty mm -hmm. smart, you know. I know how to use my tools. 2021, 2020. I'm seeing 2020 here. Well, I didn't see it. Um, when did we start this thing? 2019, I think. 
No, no, no. Or 2020. Maybe December we started 2020. 2020. I think we started December 2020. So all the 2021s are here. Yeah. They're all here. I think there a is, few episodes of there's, missing. There's a bucket load, Amy. Yes, there is. I've been watching you since February 2020. I think we started in December. That was the infamous November. Echo. November. November? Yeah, November, because Ira and Peggy listened on their drive home, and they thought it was hysterical. That, that was the they Echo thought, one, right? Yeah, the Echo one. Yeah, they thought it was hysterical. It's been a signature of our show to have an Echo now and then. Uh, yeah, yeah. What litigations have there been, if any, against the anti-vaxxers? I do not know. That would be a question for, I'll bet there's some lawyers here tonight among the 468 of us. Have there been litigations? Um, oh, and how would you, what would you litigate? So you could say Wakefield is telling people not to get vaccinated. So sue him for what? Damages? Do you have to prove it? I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. I don't think it goes to criminal court. I think it's civil court, but I have no idea. I'm not interested. Okay. In the future, as likely SARS-2 will be with us, will the delivery of boosters and antivirals and infection control be rebooted for greater efficacy? I don't think antivirals will be at all. I don't think, I don't know what infection control is. Like PPE, masks? No, this is as good as the masks are going to get. Boosters has the most high chance probability of being rebooted because you would just make it like flu. You would do a survey of what was circulating down south before in in the southern hemisphere and just include it. I'm going to say something, and Amy's going to disagree, but, you know, I have to. I cannot be silent. I cannot remain silent. I think we'll be using microneedle patches to deliver vaccines instead of needles. So I think it will help uptake. I think a lot of people are afraid of vaccines because of the needle. And so a a microneedle patch will solve that. Hey, yeah, I told you you would disagree. It's fine. It's we agree to disagree. Uh, students from Columbia wearing masks. Yes, they're required to wear masks in class until September 30th. The idea being now we have all these students coming from other parts of the country and the world, and they're all bringing their viruses together. So we try and min. That's their theory. I mean, they. I, I don't think it's necessary because uh, people who can be vaccinated, but there are people who have immunosuppressive. Uh, conditions and so forth so we need to be so let me get this straight before SARS-CoV-2 we didn't care if we infected and got immunosuppressed people sick when we all entered the dorms exactly okay good plan now we care because we have advanced somewhat okay does that work no but it it's fine Okay. Vincent, can you please explain the reason you are not scared of catching SARS-CoV-2 and developing long COVID? I think I've talked about this before. I'm not scared of most things, right? I don't think that that's a good answer. All right. I'm I'm not scared of Amy. (laughs) Yes, she is. (laughs) Because here's my answer, Claudia. I have had three uh, vaccine doses of SARS-CoV-2. And my reading of the literature says that in most people that will protect you against severe disease and death. And that's what vaccines do. So I'm good with that. Um, I think long COVID is overestimated. I don't know what the actual numbers are, but I think it's lower than we think. And, And I'm I, so in other words, I've thought about the risk, and I can live with that. Other things scare me more, but Amy is not one of them. <laughs> oh, good. You got your flu shot this week. Did you get your flu shot, Amy? 
Do they give them to you at the FDA or do you have to go to the CVS? All right, we'll find out when it becomes closer to flu season. I don't understand this. Don't worry, be have reminded us that Vincent has deer, so his farm has a few animals. That's because you said deer, right? No, it's because you said you said welcome to the rock and yellow farm, and I said, "Did you have animals?" And you said, "No, I didn't have animals." But in fact, you have deer running through your backyard, is what he's saying. So you you have rabbits and deer running through your backyard because you complain about them eating the plants. So therefore, you do really have a farm. Uh, not this one. This one. Sorry. Uh, no, here, this one. Sorry. What happens when a vaccine reverts? You can get disease. So the polio vaccine in every recipient reverts, which means so Albert Sabin worked hard to make to isolate polio viruses that did not cause paralysis. So those viruses have mutations in the genome. But unfortunately, when you give those vaccines to people, the mutations are rapidly lost by this reversion process. And then one in one and a half million kids can get polio from the vaccine. But more importantly, those viruses are shed. They can circulate. And if someone is not immunized like the fellow in Rockland County, they will get paralyzed. So that's polio. Um, I would say, Amy, that's the most problematic vaccine in terms of reversion. Would you agree with that? Yes. Okay. So here's my scolding from Elise. That's not a good reason. You can walk into your local pharmacy. You can get it before you go away. Stop it. That's what Amy <sighs> says all the time. Stop it, Vincent. Stop it. Okay. Well, I say something else. Uh, yeah, so we can't say it tonight because we have children here. At Shingrix. Okay. I'm not going to take a day off. We're going to do it, I promise, folks. You have have, um, shamed me enough. That's fine. Well, that's not a good thing. Shaming people into doing things is not a good success. It's not not shaming. It's bullying. It's bullying, and that's not not good. It's not shaming. It is just pointing out that my excuses are lame. How's that? (laughs) It's fine. The truth of the matter is, is... Most people have lame excuses about why they don't want to do things anyway, so it's not a problem. So uh, they think I'm a re- an over-responsible adult. What do you think, Amy? Do you think? Uh, I do. Okay. Thank you. Now all is good in the world. Amy thinks I'm a responsible re- uh, adult. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, Here we go. Here's a a puzzle or a riddle, I would say. SARS-CoV-2 family case study. Three kids were repeatedly PCR and antibody tested. From seven days after their exposure to COVID-2 positive parents, kids never tested PCR positive but antibody positive. Question, were they infected or not? No. We can't say. They were not infected. They were exposed. That's all you can say. Yeah, they have. They were maybe exposed to enough virus to make an antibody response, or they were vaccinated. No, because I'm going to assume that um, they looked for nucleocapsid with the antibody test, not spike. I'm assuming he used the word the wrong test that he meant an antigen test, not an antibody test. Yeah. Okay. Um, Ian says, uh, can you comment on antibody-dependent cellular cytotoxicity and the finding that sotrivimab had ADCC effect on variants? So this was done in cells in culture. You take cells with an FC receptor, which will bind the antibody, and then you can show that the virus doesn't get into those cells unless there's an antibody. And I just don't know that that has relevance to people, right? You have to show that it happens in people. And Amy and I used to talk about this for Zika virus, remember? Yes, I do. So the cell culture ADCC is interesting, but doesn't say that's what's happening in people. Doesn't say anything. And plus, you don't even know that the antibody was not. So you don't really know. It depends on what cell type that they do it in, right? 
So the antibody complex that's dependent on the uptake, that the virus's uptake is dependent upon could have been done in 293, so which don't express uh, ACE2, and therefore right, right. it would have been non-specific phagocytosis by the by the membrane, which it's constantly doing. So you have no idea. It's a sloppy experiment. It was sloppy by the woman at Sinai who did it for Zika, and it's sloppy now. All right, so here's a two-part question. Geo says, first symptoms of immunodeficiency do not appear on average until five years after that initial mild illness of AIDS. Uh, eight years later, right, it's a long-term, it's a chronic persistent infection. And then he says, why wouldn't COVID follow the same path? Well, we know it doesn't because it's an acute infection, which in most people is over in two weeks. Uh, right. HIV establishes latency in T cells. The DNA integrates into the T cells. And that's why the virus is around for many, many years. So COVID does not do that. SARS-CoV-2 does not do that. Um, someone said here, where is it? I've had shingles. Bonnie caught it very early treated. Do I need a vaccine? So you don't catch shingles. Shingles is a reactivation of your chicken pox, right? Mm-hmm. So you get chicken pox as a kid, the virus... I think she might have meant that she caught the symptoms, the symptoms of shingles, of the reactivation, like the postules. Oh, okay, yes, you need pain. a vaccine. Yeah, you should, because if you caught it with an antiviral, say, then you don't have a great immune response. So I would get the vaccine, yeah. Do you agree? Yes. Look, at, we're getting all these different viruses because we changed the title of this live stream, Amy. That was Les's suggestion. Can we talk about HSV 1 and 2? There hasn't been much progress in 30-plus years. How close do you feel like we are to a vaccine or a cure? How close were we 30 years ago? We weren't close at all. Okay. That's my answer. Um I would say we're at least another 10, 20 years off bef be before a vaccine <laughs> or a cure. Are you okay? Take a glass of water, Amy. I, I would say we're even further off. <laughs> Not making much progress. Any idea on a hypothetical mechanism for immune imprinting? Don't antibodies T cells work by detecting specific chemical properties of an antigen? Yes. Well, we don't actually understand why you would get a vaccine and then it induces B cells to make antibodies to something you got many years ago. It has to do with cross reactivity, I suppose. Yes. Or maybe it's a it's a host genetic thing, Amy. Is that possible? Sounds possible for sure. But basically, I7 of 7, no, nobody really knows. Jeff says, funny, I got the shingle shot after you guys. Rich really talked about the never stopping pain that can happen sometimes. Well, that's good. And in here, I haven't gotten it yet. Okay, we can stop with the bullying about shingles vaccines. Yeah, they're not bullying me. It's okay. I'll, I'll get it. Don't worry. Uh, oh, high A and V. Is BA5 less severe to an unvaccinated individual who is in their late 60s with no comorbidities and normal weight versus, say, Delpha, Delta or Alpha? No. I doubt it. People can Ask die of Daniel Omicron. tells, to, I was going to say, Daniel says all the time, stop calling it mild. It's not correct. It isn't. Yes, it is not mild. So I, I would be careful if you're unvaccinated. If you're unvaccinated and you do test positive, you should make sure you get Paxlovid. Okay? Very important. Uh, what do we have here? We have 283 likes, and there are 470 people. So please hit the like button, folks. I know some of you have not been here before. Just below the video window, there's a, a thumbs up. Just hit it, and that way other people on YouTube... Uh, get to see us. By the way, did you see, Amy, YouTube now has a podcast channel? No. YouTube Are slash, we going? YouTube.com slash podcast. But don't go there now because you're watching a live stream. And um, there's no science section. 
you know, it's entertainment and technology and health and fitness, but there's no science. And all of the recommended podcasts all have millions of subscribers, right? So they're not interested in promoting lesser visible stuff. I just thought you'd be interesting. I am interested. I'm just speechless. So Gwen says, I got very defensive listening to Andy. I noticed your comment in the YouTube, <laughs> Gwen. <laughs> what did she say? She said, basically, I got tired of hearing him. I'm glad Vincent stopped it after an hour. <laughs> in the fall, if one is to get a COVID booster and one was previously vaccinated by Pfizer, oh. would there be any advantage in switching to Moderna? So Daniel has gotten this question many times. He said, no, doesn't matter. Either one is really good. Did yellow fever vaccine revert in the gut? No, doesn't reproduce. Why would it revert in the gut? That reproduces elsewhere in other, in tissues. Um, and it has, it does revert, as Amy has said, because it's being studied by our colleagues at Columbia, but not in the gut, no, because the virus is injected and it, reproduces in other tissues in your body. Uh, rabies vaccine is an inactivated virus vaccine prepared in either diploid cell culture or purified chick embryo. Thank you, Mike and Lori. You're right. Got it. Boy, everyone's talking about wasps and moths. Interesting. <laughs> Tomato flu. Amy, do you think it's time to lift the COVID-19 testing and mask mandates in hospital and clinical settings? Hospital and clinical settings, Amy. No. Now, Tonya, you must know that Amy is quite adamant about other settings. So I agree with that. I don't think it should be lifted as of yet. Moths. How common is it for SARS-CoV-2 virus to cross the blood-brain barrier? I'm not clear it crosses the blood-brain barrier. Yeah, I, I, I think your brain fog um, is, a, is likely a combination of the, uh, the initial hypoxia and inflammation. Do you see the commentary? I think it was in Nature saying that maybe... Blood clots, tiny blood clots are responsible for some of the symptoms yeah, of long COVID. What do you think yeah, about I that? I think it's possible. I mean, the tiny blood clots are really dangerous uh, for your kidneys. I had a friend whose mother um, lost her kidney because of several tiny blood clots. Do you believe in the DN root? What is DN? It could be anything. Okay, so let's progress onward. So we're not going to try. Okay, fine. Look it up. I don't. I just find IT things, domain name, <laughs> but it's not. A, it's obviously not it. I'm not sure. I had heard Paul Offit's example of HPV in printing, but couldn't make sense of it. RE bivalent vaccine. Okay. Should a person, hey, Christopher, hello. How are you? Should a person with untreated psoriasis receive a fourth Pfizer vaccine and possibly experience increased psoriasis? I asked Daniel. He said, yes. It's no problem. You can get it. Yeah. There's no contraindication. I love to see Vincent looking things up on the fly. It's such a great mix of learning and teaching and shows what science is all about. I have never had an issue looking things up. The, the live stream format is great for that, right? Because Amy can talk and I can look up. Can't do this in front of a class usually. Although sometimes I do. If someone asks me a question and I think it should be answered, I'll go to my laptop and search. <laughs> I think it's good to show Students said, here's somebody who's worked on viruses for 40 years. He still has to look stuff up. But the yeah, for is, sure. I know where to look. 
<clears throat> Regarding long COVID, how do we know we are going to be okay in five to 10 years if we already caught it? It goes into remission, then boom, organ failure, et cetera. We don't know. If anyone tells you they know, they're lying, right? Yes. We don't know any of it. So, yeah, I mean, we don't know what's going to happen. It could be that everything resolves in five years or maybe not. Nobody knows. So if that bothers you, and I can understand that it would, then you can be careful. It's fine. It's totally fine. Here's a couple of definitions of ADE. When the antibody leads the virus into an immune cell, the antibody is a crappy fit. The virus gets loose inside the immune cell. I like that. How do you like that for a scientific term, Amy? Crappy fit. It's like guck. Very scientific. Every scientist should Here's, know it. And Jack distinguishes between antibody-dependent enhancement is an exacerbation of disease by vaccination, while imprinting is making a response to the original antigen, which doesn't necessarily exacerbate disease. That that makes sense. That's correct mm. also. So I don't imprinting agree doesn't with that. often imprinting doesn't Yeah, it has to make it has to make disease. Can worse. I finish it before has... you get all whatever it is? It doesn't have to cause disease, the imprinting. That's all I wanted to say. It does? Why? Yeah. Otherwise you wouldn't notice it. You wouldn't have it. It wouldn't be a problem. No, the problem is that you're no, not immune to it, the new antigen. You're immune to right, the old Right, so therefore one. it causes, it, ca no, it, it enhances disease. Not yeah, directly. You're, you're splitting yeah, hairs. Does. You're splitting no, I'm hairs. Not splitting hairs. It does. No, There's yeah. a flaw in the logic. It does. That's why it's basically the same thing. You're just, yeah, it does. They're just, yeah. It's for people who don't understand the full process that they think it, that they're different, but it's not. It's exactly can, the can a human get parvovirus from an animal? I have no idea. I don't think so, but there are human parvoviruses, of course. Yeah, I don't know that I've ever heard of a human getting dog parvo. I haven't either. Now we have lots of people talking about dirt and soil. Okay. Everybody's <laughs> concerned about dirt and soil. Dr. Wilson from Debunk the Funk would be a great guest. Actually, yeah, they are fans of, of TWIV. I've thought about having him on to talk about. Who is he? He has this program, Debunk the Funk, and he, he did a lot of debunking of SARS-CoV-2 stuff, and he does a good so job. So we in, should have him on. We should have Why him on. Why don't we should have I, him on? Should I write yeah, it down? Yeah, we should invite him on, yeah. How do we contact Mr. Dr. Wilson from Debunk the Funk? Well, I'm sure there's a contact on their website. I'll, I'll look into it tomorrow after I get my shingles vaccine. Oh, I, I thought Dr. Wilson said he didn't think he'd be a good guest, but would love to be on the show. <laughs> Well, you should come on. There's no expectations. You can't decide whether or not you're going to be a good guest or not. So a uh, POV, MCDOV, really picked up on what I said to you, Amy. He's Lancet. This is reputable, right? And you're right. Yeah. Anything reputable can sometimes be not reputable, except when they were publishing Andrew Wakefield. Absolutely right on. You're absolutely right. Uh, they've published other people who are, who've made mistakes too. You know, no journal is perfect. Exactly. Some are less perfect than others. Yes. All right. 88-year-old grandmother doesn't go out much, hasn't been sick. Should she get the vaccine if she's in really good shape, healthy, and lively? Yeah. I had Kawasaki's disease when I was two. I'm sorry yeah, you should. I think you should get the vaccine. For sure. For sure. Not going to hurt. If OPV reverts, how does protection from nerve damage develop? The antibodies. It protects it from it becoming neuroinvasive. Yeah, so the reversion doesn't inhibit the formation of an immune response. In fact, it probably helps, but, you know, that's speculation. So, as Amy said, the antibodies protect your CNS from invasion.
soil does not equal dirt. <laughs> Bloomberg story, drop in cortisol correlation with long COVID. I've seen something about that. I haven't read it. What is the idea here, Amy? Like cortisol is like a hyper, is a stress response or so you're in like hyper stress. Hmm. Helps you like fight off infections. And then when it goes down, you're like more susceptible. I see. To the is this based on a paper? Yeah, I saw the paper. I didn't read it yet. It's not on top of my list quite yet. Steph says, I remember the first time I saw Amy slouching in her chair next to Vincent in his office, making brilliant, unexpected comments. Have loved her ever since. Thank you. It's very nice. I made you a star. I understand. I made you I a want platform. A dressing, you, I want a have... dressing room with my star door, and then I want a little waiter person to come and bring me what I want. What do you want? Red wine? I don't know what I want, but I'll get back to you. But you know, you know, Kermit and Miss Piggy had dressing rooms that had stars on them. And Mel Brooks and all of his movies have dressing rooms that have stars on them. I want a dressing room with a star. How about a virus? Could we put a virus on your door? Okay. Am I planning to get a second booster? No, I'm not. Only if Columbia requires it for me to walk in the door, which they might. I feel that the numbers tell me I am protected with three shots. Oh, sunrise at Campobello. FDR's mother instructs a grandchild to say his hands are soiled and not dirty. It was meant as an example of her overly formal demeanor. Yes, I could see that, right? Mm -hmm. Is smallpox truly gone from the populace? I believe oh, so. Yeah, it's it's gone. It, I mean, there are two stocks of smallpox still left, right? In, in the U.S. Mm -hmm. and Russia, we they both have vials of virus, right? So in that sense, it's not gone, but it's gone from people. So we don't need to be vaccinated for smallpox, but... Uh, some of us might want to be vaccinated against monkeypox, right? Mm -hmm. I think anyone who wants to be vaccinated against monkeypox should be able to. But apparently that won't exist until the end of the year. I was in the ER last Thursday for a medical issue. My daughter and I kept an N95 on. Sunday we had symptoms. Monday tested positive. Well, it may have been an exposure somewhere else, right? You can't exactly. say it was that ER visit. It could have been something else. Amy, you will be able to get your flu shot at work on the clock. Federal health facilities have PHNs to do this, and it's so great. Great. Look into it. Closer to flu season. Thank you, Riri Med. If I go to South America in March, should I get a second flu shot? If I got it in September to protect me during the flu season there. Oh, I should be fine. September, this shot. I don't, it depends how old you are. If you're under 65, no, you don't need to. But if you're over 65, you might want to. Um, and Bully answered that. Okay. Not shaming. We are gently chiding. Think of it as good advice. Yeah, I'm not. It's not a problem at all. Uh, actually, it's not such a lame excuse. Most of us feel pretty sick after shin bricks. Way to get back is not a bad idea. Should I get the sec fifth shot in the fall? Fifth shot of what? SARS-CoV-2 vaccine. No. Amy doesn't think so. I don't think so. But Patricia... They do say if you're over 75, and you don't seem to be over 75, you should. Uh, but uh, I, I don't think so, no. I think you're well protected. Uh, 
Uh, why did they take type two poli type two polio from OPV? Because it was declared eradicated. It was declared eradicated, and the only type two was causing paralysis was the vaccine, right? Vaccine derived OPV. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What's the advantage of changing trivalent to a bivalent? Because the trivalent kept reintroducing type two into the environment. Well, we are in a pickle anyway. We'd be in a pickle either way if they kept using it. Or now, because the problem is, Amy, whenever there's an outbreak, they go in with type 2 OPV, right? Everywhere but here. Um, you're, but not they... to go, you're not allowed to go in here with with OPV. You can, only IPV is licensed in the United States now. Um, but... They are now using NOPV, new OPV2, when they go for no, these outbreaks, they're not. right? They're not? No, there's not enough manufactured NOPV2. They're still, so they're still using, using the old OPV? Oh, boy. That's too bad. So, like, yeah. That's what the – so we had a call, and that's what he said, yeah. My mother had shingles again a few months ago. Her doctor told her she doesn't need a vaccine for three years. Okay. Don't know That's that I twice. agree with that. But. Yeah. Well, the, the CDC has recommendations. Let's see if they say anything. Two doses, 50 years and up. Immunocompromised people. Information for healthcare professionals. Frequently asked questions. Mm, where should I store it? How many doses? Uh, Chickenpox vaccine. Wow. COVID. Nothing about that. I want to ask Daniel about that. I got to write another note on my sticky. This sticky, I better take in. Daniel. Um, Shingrix after infection. Daniel would know because he's an infectious disease physician, right, Amy? Yes. I like this. Don't you? Okay. Yes. Monoclonal or Paxlovid? Either, yeah, you could do monoclonal therapeutically. Paxlovid, of course, therapeutically. Either one will work, yeah. Mm -hmm. Blood clots, the idea has been around since at least 2020. The lots of docs talking about it, yeah. Although, interestingly, Amy, Daniel has not been. Yeah. He did at the beginning. He talked about blood clotting. Yeah. Uh. Has SARS-CoV-2 been demonstrated in the CSF or any cases of encephalitis, like in measles or herpes simplex virus? I think it's been associated, but it's not. It's kind of sloppy. So PCR positive. What what fraction of uh, these are cases with what kind of symptoms? So neurological symptoms, Amy. Yeah. Like. Don't move your mouse. You're making noise. Sorry. Okay. How how long will COVID last? I don't know if you're asking me how long will COVID last or long COVID will last. If a SARS-CoV-2 will be around forever. So long COVID, nobody knows. Nobody knows. Not even Amy, who knows a lot of things. No, I don't know. If you had fourth booster and infection, should you get the bivariant if offered in the fall? No. No. 89% of infections today are to BA4-5. I start my epidemiology program at Mount Sinai in two weeks. Any advice? My realm is neuroscience. Thank you. Yes, I have advice for you. Read the literature. And not just the modern literature, but the old literature as well. It will do you well. Right, Amy? Yes. 
You know, so I was talking to a colleague and he says to me, I'm always amazed at the shit that you know. And I look at him, I'm like, the shit I know? And he's like, yeah, it's not shit in a bad way. But I was like, okay. This has to be Ian. <laughs> this has to be Ian. No. Oh, he would say something like that. No, Ian would know better to say something like that to me because Ian knows like the next thing I'm going, the next words out of my mouth usually are. But in Phil Minor and Eckhart Wimmer's work, they say this and he says, you know how all those people are? And I'm like, yeah, I do. Um, is there any info on SARS-CoV-2 and dogs? No. Yeah, you know. Not no. not hearing a lot of um, reports of infection. My understanding is that the virus doesn't reproduce well in dogs. But yes, you, you don't want them to lose their sense of smell, right? But I haven't seen any reports of that. No. Uh, shingles vax requires two shots. I got one in February. Is it too late for the second? No, no. You can go up to five years between doses. I just saw that on the CDC website. Yep. Um, do you, does the WHO still have targets for eliminating polio or have they given up? We'd like them to give up. Well, they they still have targets, yes. They have a massive program to eradicate. They have, uh, you know, it, the problem is wild type one is still in Pakistan and Afghanistan. No, the problem is, is that we've just replaced wild type capsid proteins. With, well, that too. With vaccine pro proteins. That and too. the other problem is, is we the way, so AFM, poliomyelitis, paralytic poliomyelitis is really, a euphemism or a synonym for AFM, except in that case, we actually know very clearly what the virus is that causes it. The other ones, it's hard, much harder to just say that you have EB68 or, a, or 71 AFM because you don't, we don't sample properly for 68, so we can never find it. It's just an association. So now they have a problem because lots of things cause it, a childhood paralysis. Not well thought out. And Amy is working on this, so she knows. I work on it intimately. It bothers me. It keeps me up at night, hours. And you know how I sleep. I get up. I walk around. I do some stuff. I try to sleep a little bit more. I get up. I walk around. I do some stuff. And then the third time, I just say, oh, that's it. We're out. Hugo says, a study in hamsters found that BA5 is more pathogenic than 1-2. Authors say, observations strongly suggest that SARS-CoV-2 does not necessarily evolve to attenuate its pathogenicity. So for, I, I think it's very hard to make these conclusions from uh, animal studies, right? Because BA1-2 is attenuated in hamsters, but in people it's not attenuated. I'm not, sure. <laughs> I'm not sure it was attenuated in non-human primates. So I, I just don't think we can make comparative conclusions about virulence using animal models, uh, at least that we want to extrapolate to people. First of all, you can't make virulence comparisons. Yep. Um, what was that? Amy could put a star on her bedroom door. And some crafty listener should make a big gold star with Amy on it and send it to her so she could put it behind her in these videos. That would be cool. <laughs> that would be funny. Yeah. Oh, this is cool. My mentor always says there's walk around knowledge and look up knowledge. Both both are useful and needed. Yeah, that's really that's good. True. I like that. There, that's yeah, true. That's great. <laughs> you're protected by three until you're not. Well, I think uh, I am protected. I, I don't think the knot's going to come along. That's how I read the risk. And believe me, I read it. Oh, I'm 65 until 10.04. Happy birthday, Julie. Julie. Happy birthday, Julie. Carmen, thank you for your support. Uh, looking forward to visiting the incubator. We'll be really pleased to have you. You bet. <laughs> I 
whoever asked about dogs and loss of smell from COVID really got me worrying. It would be so frightening for a dog. I bet like going blind to us. Yeah. Uh, yeah that's yes. So uh, plus stocks of smallpox you don't know about. Right. I'd eat my hat if at least few militaries don't hold stock. By the UK record, I wouldn't trust Porton Down not to have it for defensive purposes. Porton Down. I love the name. Of course, it uh, was uh, a place where nasty, nasty viruses were worked on. Mm -hmm. uh, I am so tired of dealing with the pandemic. Want it to be over. How much longer do you think we have to wait until we are lo no longer so fixated on the virus and attendant disease? That's an interesting question, Amy. So fixated on it. What do you think? When the next physical disaster occurs. Okay, probably that's it. But I've moved beyond it, although I still answer questions and talk about it a lot. What's the logical case for not wearing a mask moving forward? Because in my opinion, nothing is going to change in the next five to 10 years that would, if you decide you're going to wear a mask, you're going to wear a mask for five to 10 years. The virus isn't going anywhere. We're not having new therapies. So this is the best that it's going to get. All right. Four minutes, time to wrap up here. Let's see if we have um, any other people to thank. We use D-dimer, a marker of intravascular clotting in the lab setting as a prognostic indicator. Yeah, D-dimer. Daniel always used to talk about D-dimer. But I'm talking about more recent ideas that microclots are playing some role in long COVID specifically. The, the D-dimer was an indicator back then, but for long COVID, the microclots are what we're talking about now. Okay, folks, three, we got three minutes and we're going to go to the very end. Why won't we get new therapies? They will the be money has dried up. All the vaccines are developed. Or, or there will be some others tested, but harder and harder to test. Uh, and the antivirals, well, they're all going to be antivirals. Nothing that's going to change how this virus is. It's going to be here forever. We can't get rid of it, right? Immunity doesn't get rid of the virus. It's always going to circulate. It's, it's endemic. It's going to infect every year. And there will be people at risk for severe disease. And we can, as Daniel says, we can take care of them. We can give them Paxlovid or monoclonals and save their lives. And the only reason they're dying now is because they're not properly treated. So this means we have this under control. What is it that the director of the FDA said, Amy? So in February, he said that there was no reason for anybody to die of SARS-CoV-2 infection. There's no reason for anyone to die of SARS-CoV-2 because we have therapies that can save your life. If the vaccine doesn't, and for whatever reason you have severe disease, which is going to happen in some people, we can still save your life with monoclonals and Paxlovid. And I think- Oh, your friend is here. Jan uh, T is here. Yeah, she's here. I saw her at the beginning, yeah. Um, what was I saying? We have monoclonals and, and vaccines, and now it's a matter of you going to the doctor at the right time and the doctor prescribing the appropriate therapy in a timely fashion. Exactly. And right. if they don't, you should get a new doctor. And any therapies we get, T, asterisk, S, will just be reiterations of what we have now. I really don't see anything revolutionary, but it's not going to eliminate the virus. It's here to stay. And so that's how I feel about that. Anyway, folks, thanks again for coming. I want to thank the moderators tonight. We had Steph, we had Les, we had Vanity Nutrition, uh, we had Tom. I didn't see uh, Frank I didn't tonight. see Frank. Thank you all for coming, being uh, so constant in your showing up here and helping keep this a civilized place. I want to thank all of you for coming, all 500 of you. Look at that, 362 likes. Please push it over 400 before we leave. Just hit the like button. But boy, 500 people, cool. I want to thank all of you for coming. And if we didn't get your questions in, we'll be back next week. 
next Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. And, of course, I would like to thank Dr. Amy Rosenfeld for spending two hours here. Thank you, Amy. Oh, thank you, Vincent. It's good. It's all good. It's always good to chat with you. Yep, it's always good. Even if we disagree, it's all good. Thanks, everybody. Have a great week. Stay safe. See you next time.